We're really pleased to be able to introduce you to our article recently published in the British Journal of Urology International on the use of botulinum toxin type A in the treatment of non-neurogenic overactive bladder, focusing in particular whether the different formulations available make any difference to patient outcomes. Botulinum toxin has proven to be a very effective treatment for refractory overactive bladder. There are two formulations of botulinum toxin available for clinical use. One being owner botulinum toxin A, commercially known as Botox, and the other abo botulinum toxin A, commercially known as Dysport. Of the two, Dysport is the less well studied. What we wanted to know was whether there was a difference to patient outcomes using either formulation. Our study was a retrospective analysis of 207 patients who underwent treatment in our centre between January 2009 and June 2012. All patients were routinely asked to complete a symptom and outcome questionnaire, both pre- and post-operatively. In December 2009, our departmental protocol changed from using Botox to using Dysport. We then compared the outcomes for the Dysport group with the Botox group. The operative technique used is similar to that used in many units. Typically patients are done with a local anaesthetic with a flexible cystoscope. The toxin, whether it's Botox or Dysport, is reconstituted in 20 mL of normal saline. The injections are administered as 1 mL boluses delivered to the detrusor muscle where possible. Um, a standard pattern of injections throughout the posterior and side walls of the bladder is used and in our unit we do not uh, attempt to spare the trigone area. Exactly the same distribution of injections and volume of injections was used um, in the two periods when Dysport and Botox were used. So the only difference was in the type of toxin um, during each time period. What we found was that there were very similar outcomes for the majority of parameters we looked at. There were similar reductions in daytime frequency, nocturia, urgency and urgent continence. There was also a very similar duration of effect between the two formulations. The main difference was that the intermittent self catheterization rate for Dysport was about twice that as for Botox. 42% of patients who received Dysport injections needed to do intermittent self catheterization, whereas this was only 23% with Botox injections. This would suggest that the two formulations are not necessarily interchangeable at the doses used in this study, um, particularly in terms of the risk of urinary retention.